Okay, so the question is, what happens to the house when we built our house to keep all of the tumma out of the house, right? We don't have TV, and we don't have internet at home, and we don't have iPhones, and we don't have... All the stuff is out of the house. And now, all of a sudden, we have a kid. Right? We have a kid in pain. We have a kid who has a diagnosis. We have a kid who has a letter from a rub that it's Bikwak Nefesh, it's Chayla Sheesh Basen all different levels, right? But we're definitely not dealing with regular chinuk over here. And all of a sudden, we're told, right, to do things that are different. We want the kid home. And all of a sudden, the home, and she's walking around not sneistic, right? And all of this is happening. So first of all, there are some background to all of this. The Yisra Yashif, a woman went to Rebbe Yashif, Zatzal, and said, I have eight kids, and I have a girl, 15 years old, who walks around the house, not sanua, not listening to any rules, and I can't raise my family this way. So I want to get, get rid of the girl. I want a psak to get rid of the girl. Rebbe Yashif said, if you're really worried about the influence of this kid on the other kids, send away all your other kids to aunts and uncles. They'll be fine. Dedicate your time and your house and your efforts to this kid, because she won't be fine without you. And then afterwards, when she's stable, okay, then you can bring your kids back home. Now, in my mind, I don't think his point was to really do that. I think any parent who hears that realizes, oh, you mean there's really no choice here. In other words, no, you're not getting rid of your kid. Gershon Edelstein said the same exact thing. Family that I know went in and said that we want to go ahead and uh, we want to get rid, of, we want to, uh, we want to get rid of our kid. And he said, if you're really worried about a bad ashba, you send away the healthy ones. My said the divrei oil of the yeshiva with 40 bachrim in it. 38 bachrim were top regular from kids. Two were mechal shams. Two were bad, bad apples. And Reb Moshe Naishlois, I said it right, Reb Moshe Naishlois, went to the Divrayoil and said, we have a big problem, we want permission to get rid of these two boys. They used to ask permission. You know? And he said, the other 38 boys are good? He said, yeah, they're good boys. And over here, this boy is, these boys are totally out of control. It's a bad ashba. He said, they're good? Yeah, they're good. He said, throw them out. They'll make it. They'll find another yeshiva or without a yeshiva. They'll be from. We're not going to lose them in Klal Yisrael, but these kids, if you're going to let them go out of yeshiva, they're going to be lost. They'll be lost forever. Chazanish, same story. So many gedolim, they, they put us up against the wall. Not an option to lose a child. Not an option. This is the pickle that Hashem set you into. Sad. And the family went ahead and cried out to Reb Gershon Edelstein, Shlita, and they said, the mother started crying, my house, my house. I built a house of Kedusha, blocking all of this out. We did such a good job. And now in my house, the iPhone and the internet and the Natsnias and the whole business, right? My house, he said. And what about in your house having the mitzvah of saving your child? What about the mitzvah of doing the Ratzon Hashem? What about the mitzvah of saving a child who will drown? That's not Kedusha? It made them realize, what are we, so black and white? We're very black and white. We have Esrik Mohudur, and we don't have a television or a house, we're good to go. But what about, we're gonna, talking about losing a child, talking about losing a shavit. Most of these kids come back, and you're talking about more Avera, lessening the chance for them to come back. We're talking about Kares. That's the Ratzon Hashem. You think Hashem says, wow, I love this house. Yeah, they used to have nine kids, they only have six, but the six are learning in Kares. The other three drug addicts on the street. I got a call a couple of years ago from a family from a certain community. I don't want to say where. And they, called, they told me, we just got off the phone with Shmuel Kamenetsky. He said, call Avi Fishoff. So I said, okay, what's going on? Because, well, we called Rup Shmuel. We want a psak. We have eight kids. I don't know what's with these eight kids. Maybe that's a bad number. Zubin. I don't know. We have eight kids, and we have one kid, and he's 16 years old, and we want to throw him out of the house. We called Rup Shmuel for a psak. He said we should call you, and we said we don't want to call advice. We're not asking, we're past advice. We want a psak. Can you give us a He said, call Avi Fisher. So we're calling you. I said, I'm so sorry to hear this. It's very painful. I said, what are his crimes against humanity? He said, he's in yeshiva, he's from, he's a good kid, nice boy. He has a chop, he likes tight pants, and he listens to Gaisha music. That was you in the beginning? Did you, you were the ones who called me? No, I don't think so. 
And it was everybody in the beginning, right? Okay, everybody went through that stage. Anyway, so they, and, and they don't want advice. They don't, they want a psak. Did he do enough to do curries? In other words, we know, and I told him, said, you realize that if you throw him out of your house, which is what you want, then for sure he's going to be Michal Shabbos, and for sure he's going to be a drug addict, and you're losing his future. And they said, we understand that, but we have seven other kids at home. And if we're going to let this behavior continue, then all of our kids are going to be listening to Gaisha music, have a chip, and have tight, tight pants. We, it's a bad ashba on the other kids. So you understand that if you don't know what chinuch is, and, you, and, and you're in this, like, you think that that's a problem. You think that if you allow one thing, all your kids want to be bad. You think that all kids are para other. It comes from a mentality. All kids are bad. They're all going to be as worse as possible. As soon as you die, they're all going to go off the dark. Right? They're all rotten kids. Nobody wants to be firm. Nobody believes that this is a good religion or a true religion. Nobody actually wants to be in the yeshiva and live according to the standards that you have. As long as they have the leash on, you can control them and control them and control them until you die. By then, hopefully, they're 80 years old and, and, then, and they'll be okay. Right? That's how much faith you have in raising your children. That's the way the Gedalim raise their children, by controlling and forcing them and, and being worried that they're going to go off. And uh, well, what's going to be? I had a Satmar guy that told me he had, he had like 10 sons. And finally, he said, you know what? I am willing to accept my son who shaves. I'm even willing to hug him, not in front of my other boys. They're going to be so confused. Tati gives you a hug even though you shave? Megillah? I said, so really, so, I mean, all your other boys don't want to have a beard? They didn't buy into this whole Satmar thing? They all want to be Litvaks? By your Levaya, they're going to be handing around shavers? They're only not shaving because Tati's not going to hug you? Nobody believes in your, in your lifestyle? Like, what are you saying? You raised your kids to be happy, to be like you, why would you even be concerned about that? You know how many families there are that one kid's a little bit more modern and the next one is super yeshivish? Why do you think everyone is going to be modern? Everything? And I told them, first of all, I disagree with your whole ma'alach. I don't think that if one kid is allowed to be a certain way, that the next one who's smarter or the next one is more matzliach or the next one who's more chashiv or the next one who's just turned on more to Yiddish. He's not going to, it's not going to happen. I said, but I have a question for you. What home do you think Hashem wants more? A home with seven yeshivish kids and one drug addict because you did kares? Or a home with eight kids who have tight pants, chups, and listen to Gaisha music? I don't agree with you that that's going to happen. But even according to you, that you're worried that Dashpa is going to be that every single person is going to go down the tubes? So you really, you really think Hashem wants to lose a shavit in Klai so He wants you to lose your child? I said, besides the fact, do you realize that if we did kares on everybody 30 years ago who had a chuk, tight pants, and listened to Gaisha music, do you realize there would be almost no Rosh Hashivas today? Do you realize that what 1970, 1980, what, what we looked like? Right? Do you know how many Rabbanim did I know that were in camp and whatever, and, and with the flower yarmulke thing and the tight pants and, the, and listening to, to, to good old stuff that we listened to in the good old days. I'm not saying today Avad is worse, but this is a death sentence? We have, this is it. Did he eat Traif? No. Did he eat Michalim Kippur? No. Did he break Shabbos? No. Did he have a girlfriend? No. Tight pants, death sentence. So they went to Reb Gershon, going back to my story, and she was crying, and he said, what about the Avad Hashem of saving your child? The greatest Avad Hashem in the world, as Zaira Kadr says, there's nothing greater in Avad Hashem than saving somebody who's one of these kids. That doesn't count? That doesn't count. So then the father started crying. He said, but it's so hard. He said, many mitzvahs are hard. He said, it's a mitzvah I say in the Torah. Many mitzvahs are hard. He wouldn't let them. Why don't the Rabbanim just say, yeah, listen, this is the way Kala Yisrael works. Anybody who doesn't sushtel to the family should be thrown out. Have more kids, so you'll have, you wanted to have 10, have 12, you know, two of them will, will sink. You'll end up with 10 good ones, and you'll have two shkatsim. There was always an Erev Rav, that's what one, one somebody said. Klai Yisrael always had an Erev Rav. Okay, so you got some of the Erev Rav, so have more kids, and cut away by the time you see 5, 6, 7 years old. You see it's not working out, 12, 13, 14, then Sayyid Ramari, cut them out, cut them out, cut them out, cut them out, cut them out. Why not? Why are all of these Litvish, Hasidish, Yeshivish, Lubavitcher, from all cries, and why are they all so focused on you don't lose your kid? You know why? Because Hashem gave you this kid. So losing the kid is not an option. Now, 
we're stuck. We have a family to run. So you have to go ahead and you have to start raising your children Jewish. The normal chinuch, we don't talk to our kids, we don't explain to our kids. But you have to explain to them our religion. You have to explain to your other children that your sister, your brother is going through a hard time. Rav Steinman explained exactly what to tell siblings. He said, you tell your siblings, your brother is doing the wrong thing, he's behaving badly. They should know, Chil Shabbos is bad, Treif is bad, he's behaving badly. And you know what Hashem wants? And they all go, what? And they're expecting you to say, Hashem wants us to hate him. He says, no, Hashem wants us to give him so much love that he should be comfortable in our home, so that way he'll be chayzeh v'tshuva. He is bad. Hashem wants us to be good. What is good? We are being the car of this neshama that was placed, as Eric Kaddish says, was placed into our family for whatever tikkunim, whatever gulgulim, whatever reason, to save, not to cut off, not to do kares. Most of these kids come back. So what are you doing kares on? We're going to lose 90% of these kids that would have come back anyway because we don't have patience, because we don't use the Yud Gimel Midas of Eric Kaddish Baruch Hu, of Rachum Chan and Erech Apayim. Patience and patience and patience. Exactly. Now, but the other kids need to be taught. Need to be taught. Yes, this, we're letting, we're doing this because we have to save. We don't give up on you. Now, there's a few statistics I want to throw at you. Statistic number one, the families that fight with their kids, other kids suffer terribly, and there's a lot of trauma. And I'm not saying it myself. There was an article written up in a magazine that quoted some of the top ten people working with this. Is you have no idea the damage done to those other kids that you're trying to save by fighting with this kid. By the way, you can't delete them. Everyone says, like, be Makarov, or it'll be better to get rid of them. They don't delete. They come home, homeless, they break into the house, there's constantly cops coming, and, and it could be a year or two of a war zone. Those of you who went through it know what I'm talking about. A war zone, because you're worried about the other kids. It's much healthier to have 10 happy kids at a Shabbos table, with one who's in their underwear, happy, and everyone's happy, they will realize this kid is Nebuch Kuku, and we're Baruch Hashem normal. And I'm saying this because we have over 1,800 siblings. I'm saying we have 1,800 in this process. The people who are saying, oh, this is terrible for the other kids. Show me data. Show me data. Show me which kids. How come we have families coming in? Last night we had a, fa <coughs> a family, parents of 12, said all the kids died from it. By and large, when we work with the kids, with the skip groups, you're, you're right here. How many other kids do you have? A bunch of other kids at home? We have hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of families that say, but what happens is when you go into this and you're angry and you're confused and you're thinking, and, and everybody's, you know, shuckled and nervous, of course it's not going to work. You've got to be calm. You've got to really, really master the manual, get this into your house, into your head, bring up your kids with the groups and with the, with the recordings that I give you, right? It's a, it's, it, and of course it's very risky. I risk my own kids. I brought in all. I brought in tons of this schmutz, right? That's what they call it, rebels into my house. My kids grew up with seeing open chil Shabbos. You think that made it attractive to them? They want to be mechal Shabbos. They want to go smoke on Shabbos because this kid goes and smokes. But I had to work on it, right? I worked on it. I need a lot of seyat to You need a lot of seyat to But turn your back on your kid? How could you turn your back on your kid? Look at all the different tire we have backing it. So the people who say that if you're not going to do this, your kids are better off, they don't know the data of thousands of kids that are in pain and they don't agree. They say, Tati, is, why is he being such a baby? He, he's, he's, you, know, you know, we don't look that great when we get angry and we throw the kids out of the house. There's a lot of, a lot of anger and, and the house is angry and there's a lot of danger that comes because of that. There's a lot of tension. A lot of tension. And how many families do we have here where I get emails, I just got this week an email from the parents don't even know. One of the married sisters, 
you change the whole atmosphere of the family. The house used to be tense, because I'm a married girl, I'm out of there already four years. The house used to be tense. I come in now, the house is chilled. My parents are happy to see us. They're hugging us. They're nice. They're understanding. They're actually, you could do much more chinuch when you're understanding and close to your kids. And when you're angry all the time, you're fired. Mommy's crying all the time, and daddy's angry all the time, and storming away. The process of, of alienating kips is a long process. Going to court, not easy. Bailing them out of jail, not easy. Seeing, no, hearing stuff every day, another Agmas Nefesh, he's here, he's there, he's draining around, this girl, this boy, this uh, apartment and that apartment. It's a very, very painful process. So it's not like, you know, ooh, do this thing that's so difficult, or you're on easy street. It's very, very painful. So we do it because it's right. We do it because Baruch Hashem, our track record is much better than the other guy, whoever that guy is. We do it because it's the best thing for your other children. It, but it's like any training process. It can either kill you or it can raise you. You know, it, they can they can fall apart from it or you can train them. You can train them, you can train them. I'm amazed at our skips. I really am. I'm amazed at how siblings have told me from the beginning, I steigt, I got firmer, I got more amuna. Some of them get more into amuna, some of them get more. And they see a beautiful thing. Do you know what a chil Hashem it is to your other children when they see what's called and known as the dark side of Yiddishkeit? You know what the dark side of Yiddishkeit is? The part that says that if you don't conform, I cut you out, I throw you out, I can't look at you. All of that stuff. The kids on the street call it the dark side. Yeah, they walk around, Chassidus is beautiful. Chassidus? If you're not like them, even if you're Litvish, they cut you out of the will. That's a dark side. They don't talk to you about that. That's what the Baal Shem meant. That's what he meant. So, the other kids who are baked in a home, where they see the dark side of Yiddishkeit and the, the trauma and we don't always get it right and then we get angry for no reason and then we're crying over the wrong thing and the other kids meanwhile you know what the statistics are of the kids who were thrown out of home that their brothers and sisters are out there behind the parents back because the parents said you better not do it and they're meeting with their brother and their sister behind the scenes that's horrible chinuch. it's a chil Hashem we're showing them that we follow in the Baal Shem Tov's path why do we have to second guess it Show me one place that said that you shouldn't do it. So you're worried about your other kids that you're going to follow the Ratzon Hashem, that it's going to be, right, you're going to follow the Baal Shem Tov said to do, and all the different diff Torah, that it's going to be bad on your other kids. So instead, what do you want to do? What no, what no Torah source ever said to do, to be merachic the kids, lose a shavit, do curries, and you think that's going to impress God, and you're going to have a lot of siyata deshmai in your other kids. Now, the last thing I want to say is, I didn't knock on your door and tell you to come here. You did your research, you went to your rav, you went to your das Torah, your das Torah said, this is what you need to do. So, we don't have to review every single time, but, 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 but. You need siyata deshmai, yes. Whatever you're going to do, you need siyata deshmai. You need tremendous siyata deshmai. But you need to raise your kids up. There's a Hasidish boy that spoke for over an hour as a sibling. And he was extremely, extremely Hasidish, very from, didn't look at a mirror even the day when he went to buy the Bekesha for his wedding. He wouldn't look in the mirror. Very, very Hasidish. And he was very close to his daughter, to his sister. And when his sister went off the derech, Imamish ripped him apart. And he went to the Kal of Rebbe's Zayn Gazit. And he went and he got Hadrucha from Rebbe's and he spoke, listen to his speech. Nobody said Rechuk. The Kalavid Rebbe said, you should grab her and hug her. You should talk about the Alta Git Tzat and when used to be friends. No Misse, Zugnish Ka Misse. So why do we think that the Rebbe's advice is going to hurt the Chinuch of the other children? And whose advice is the other advice from? Which Rebbe is saying that you should teach your kids that this is bad, and, and, and this is not in our house. Just, I want to meet that Rebbe. And if you have that Rebbe, and it's your Rebbe, by all means, I'm no issue. But your Rebbe who sent you here, or your Das Torah says, no, we have to be Makarov. So if you feel that you're doing the right thing, if you feel that you're following your Das Torah, if you feel you're following the Chazanish, because he said exactly what to do, and all the G'daylam, why shouldn't you be Zechot to see after the Shema? Is it risky? 100% it's risky. You know what's worse? When you have an enemy living at home, when you have an enemy living at home, they will poison all your kids. They will molest them sometimes. They will leave out their porn magazines for them sometimes. They will do because they feel so hated and so resentful. I'm the problem. We know most of these kids were hurt and they're good. 
and everybody hates me because I can't function properly, I'll show you. Live with an enemy in your house. You tell me how that feels after six months. Again, you can't delete them. Having a friend, they watch your other kids. They, when they have a television, they will tell the other kids, no, 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 you can't watch this. Right? You're shaking your heads, 100%. They'll protect, they'll want your other kids to be matzliach. They don't want the other kids to be like them. When you're fighting with them, they want all the kids to be like them. When you are doing TP on these kids, they do not want their siblings to be, how could I say such a thing? Because we have 1,800 siblings. We have 300 families who will nod their head, just like you're nodding and you're nodding. They will nod their heads and say, yeah, that's 100% true. They don't want their brothers and sisters to be dropped out, dropouts and failures and drop out of school. That's not what they want. When they are at peace and at home and loved and not hated and hurt in the name of Tyra, they're not anti. Where are all our atheists? How many atheists that are no longer atheists after a couple of years? You're here, right? Okay? Mamish, what did you do? Which program? Which Eishat Torah? Which Ar Sameach program? Right? It's nice to have people in the crowd, right? Who, who actually can vouch for this. It's amazing. On its own, a guy who's the most brilliant kid, genius of a genius of a genius, so valedictorian, right? And top yeshivas, brilliant boy, and he has all the books. Not a kid who says, I'm an atheist. He books and Satan, book, books on Satan and, and all craziness stuff. And now, from not interested... <laughs> he wants pictures on his walls of Rabbeim, the same kid who said, Hitler didn't finish the job, and I want to kill every single Jew. I want to light myself on fire in Times Square so there'll be one less effing Jew, quote, end quote. And now he's saying, how come we don't have pictures of Rabbeim? Like, what? What did you do? What care of? Nothing. You're a mommy. You loved him. You loved him to death. You loved him to life. Right? And he wants pictures of Rabbeim. We said, oh, every one of those are molesters. How many of these kids say that? And now, it's a few years later, you went through a lot, you did TP, and the result is unbelievable. Unbelievable. No rehab, no, we didn't throw them in Utah, and we didn't send them away to the club with the guy in. We don't need Mormons to be Makar of our kids. We do it ourselves. You did a great job. You, she did an amazing job. I remember where I was driving when you called me that you were scared he's going to kill you and you were out and you were right in the beginning stages. We went through hell. This is hell. Yes, this is a battle for the life of a, of a soul and we fight to the death. Yes, we fight to the life. But you won, Baruch Hashem. Drugs, gone. Everything gone. He's four years. And you want to know something? If you listen to her story, it's on one of the recordings. I changed your voice, but 45 minutes. Okay, really, she could talk for four years. Okay, but if you listen to her story, where we were, where we are, four years is nothing. Nothing. Drugs, no drugs. Psych, no psych. Atheist, no atheist. Satan worshiper, no Satan worshiper. Not religious, Shaima Shabbos. Like, totally you know, healthy or stable or everything. Four years is not a lot of time to go from a total breakdown. Total breakdown. I want every effing Jew to die. Hitler didn't do the job in four years. If you would have seen you, if you would have seen him four years ago, it would have made the trip a lot easier. If you would have known four years ago, and in four years my, my son is going to say, how come we don't have pictures of Rabbanim on the walls? Would have made the trip. Would have made... He can faint. He can die from this. Amazing. Amazing. Well, everybody thinks that, you know, when you go through it in the beginning, it's so challenging. Everybody thinks like, oh, that was one, that was two. But Leah and her, we have such a high success rate of kids that are from. And, and again, we're not, we're doing it so they should become from. Of course, we want everybody to be from. First thing is we're doing it because it's right. Okay, and we're doing it because not doing it is worse. We're trying to keep them alive. We have a lot of different stages of kids. We have kids who we just want to keep them alive. As long as you're alive, you can become healthier, and you could even do tshuva one day, okay? But if you're not alive, then that never happens. We have kids who are just partially keeping alive. Then we have kids that we want to keep home. 
No, don't go to the park. Don't go to the drug addicts. Don't go out at, on the street. We want to win them over with fun. And then we have kids who have low self-esteem and it's a bracha that we just want to pump up with as much fun as we can so they don't go back on drugs and they don't go. And then, yes, it happens to be that a beautiful side effect of being the ones to be there for your kid is that why wouldn't they be from? Why shouldn't I be like my family? But the family that turns their back on their kid, why would you ever want to be from? When I went through my tzibrach and kind, I went through my dark times, you turned your back on me. I was hurting, I was lost, I was confused. So I didn't want to be from. You cut me out of your will, and nobody's allowed to look at me, and I become a pariah, and I become a mitzayr. I mean, really? That's your religion? You know how many times families that I did not take, because it weren't, weren't so bad, of parents that called me, they were going to throw their kids out of the house, because the kids became, they were chassidish, and they became modern. Right? I, I don't deal with that. That's not, to me, a crisis. I'm not knocking the fact that to see the family it's very painful. I understand it's very painful. I just don't deal with that pain. And I told, the, I always tell them, go to your Rebbe and ask, what is our halacha? What is our Torah? T- if your child comes to you and says, I did a lot of research, I'm very sorry, I don't want to be whatever chassidish you are or yeshivish, I want to be young Israel. I bought brown shoes and a blue shirt for Shabbos, Shabbat. I want to be Erlich Young Israel. What does your Torah say? You know, people get confused. They think, no, if you're not Hasidish, you can't come home. You have to go put on Velcro Pais and Ashramo. I have a family that they won't let their kid home. The kid is completely Shemit Torah Mitzvah. He was off the derech. Okay, I couldn't argue with them. I didn't know them really at that point to teach them. And he was banished from the home. But now he's from. They said, well, he's not Hasidish. I said, what? He can't come home. I said, you mean if he becomes the head of the Meatzis Gedele Yatera, but he's a Litvak, he's not allowed to come home? He has to be Hasidish? He can't just be Shemr Shabbos? He can't just be in Gan Eden? No, no, no. And again, all the other kids. Really? All your kids see that we allow this kid, who's, he's young Israel, so all your 12 other kids are all going to go off to Derech and become young Israel? Nobody wants to be Hasidish? What is wrong with this Chinuch? Why don't they want to be what they want to be? You know what I mean? They're all going to go out the next day and get brown shoes? Nobody wants to wear black shoes? Nobody wants to wear volin and Nobody wants to have pies? Come on! I don't deal with schools, so we'll leave that on the side. But as a, a school is not married to the child. You're a parent, you're a mommy. This is to the death. You die for your kid. You would. Even the parents who throw their kids out also would die for the kid. It's not that they don't love their kid. They're just in a tremendous amount of pain and usually misguided. And they're doing things that they themselves see doesn't work. They just, nobody, they don't believe that things could be different. They don't believe that after a couple of months of TP that things could be calmer and there's no fighting and, and, and we're just loving the kid and, and the other kids can be worked on. They don't believe that there's big gedolim that really hold that this is the sign of our guard to do this. They think, no, it's, a, it's confusing, it's confusing. So you got to put that all together. Also, read the TP manual. There's a whole chapter on the siblings. The whole chapter on the siblings is there. You'll see how many quotes from big people. Don't throw your kids out of the house. Don't make it miserable. Don't make rules that are going to make them being home miserable. There was a kid that was fighting with his parents so bad that he was so lahachas, this kid. So lahachis, he, he sprayed the smoke alarm in the house with a deodorant or something. I didn't even know that. And it makes it go out in the middle of the night. Fire alarm goes off. And he did things lahachis, mamish the house. You couldn't breathe. But they came to me. They came to me. The kid's living now four years. This four years living at home. No violence. Stop it. The kids are not like that. They're reacting to the way the parents are treating them. And they're treating them either in the name of Chinuch, or the name of Taira, the name of Hashem, or the name of therapy. And if you're doing it in the name of Taira, I can understand. But, you know, come on, I'll teach you, I'll send you to some other Rabbanim who have a way of Taira that does not make your house a war zone. You're not in, you're not in Lebanon or Gaza. Why, why, why go down that road? But in the name of therapy? The name of, why? Why? I mean, just what is happening over here? So study the, the, sibling, the, uh, the sibling chapter. And really, the most important thing is when you're happy and you're calm and you feel like you understand and you have a shita and you believe in it and your rub says, this is what Hashem wants from you, it transfers over to the children. The Nabuch, we have one kid that fell off the boat. We have one kid that's very shvach. 
And I love all of you, and I'm with you. Imai and Nechi Betzara, Imai and Imai. Right? Mommy's with you and Avi. Avi, also Bitsara. I'm with you and life's complicated and Mivarf Nishmit Kinder. Right? Shlami Miller was here, he said Hashem didn't th- doesn't throw us out of his home and we don't throw our kids out of our home. Mivarf Nishmit Kinder. Okay? Now, so that means that really everybody unanimously says, you're not allowed to throw the kid out. So then how do you keep on escalating the situation? Well, you can't dress like this, and you can't go here, you can't go there. You make Gehenim in your house. We have calm in our house. That's the idea. Come and treat your other kids like I've explained to you. Bezus Hashem, Bezus Hashem. By next year, you're going to be already cruising, you know, flying at a calm altitude without the turbulence. Bezus Hashem.